sur des exits. We prepare for this. We will not be the prime suspects. So now we have the fourth film in the Oceans film franchise. But does it hold up to the rest? Let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Oceans 8. I really do appreciate it. So, of course, when Oceans came out, I was intrigued, but at the same time, I was a little skeptical, like, oh, they're going to make a fourth film. Who's going to be in charge? Who's going to be behind the camera? Is it going to hold up as good as the rest? Um, the only difference is this does not have a predominantly male cast like the past three films. This is a all female cast. And uh, I think that that's pretty good. Um, I didn't really like the way it was marketed when it first came out, like a female version of Oceans. I kind of just feel like that's kind of crapping on women. Uh, but I kind of got over that when I saw more than my marketing material coming out. And, uh, you know, it was just, you know, looking real good. Now, uh, like I said, this is a spinoff. Um, one of the things I was concerned about is, is this actually related to the other films other than it being called Ocean? And yes, Sandra Bullock's character named Debbie Ocean. She is the brother of Danny or Daniel Ocean, uh, played by George Clooney in all the previous films. Now, the difference between this film and the past is all those was directed and um, I believe directed and written by Steven Soderbergh. He has very distinct style uh, the style in directing. Um, he has a lot of scenes to where there's just a ton of walking or just camera panning around and it's nothing but music in the background or the soundtrack. Um, you know, some people like that. A friend of mine, I know his girlfriend, she specifically said that she did not like that, which is why she didn't like that film Haywire that Steven Soderbergh did as well. I happen to like it, though. I think it's a nice touch and kind of just makes him stand out from uh, all other directors in Hollywood. But he is not directing this film. Who is? Gary Ross is, who is the writer and director. Um, I love all of Gary Ross's films. He did Pleasantville, uh, Sea Biscuit. I didn't love Sea Biscuit, but I liked it a lot. Uh, the Hunger Games and The Free State of Jones. And so um, he is behind the camera on this. But rela and, and relating to Steven Soderbergh as well, I did find a lot of directorial elements of Soderbergh in this film, even though he did not direct it. So I kind of just like how... Um, I, you know, I don't know if that was just done on purpose or it was a kind of a natural or organic thing, but that was just one way that this film actually did feel like it fit within the universe of the past uh, previous films. And so um, this film is Oceans 8. It's not Oceans 11, 12, and 13. So there are only eight characters, Sandra, uh, main characters, Sandra uh, Bullock, Kate Blanchett, Anne Hathaway, Mindy Kaling, Sarah Paulson, Aquafina. Or Aka Wafina, Rihanna, and Helena Bonham, uh, Bonham Carter. Um, they all did a fair job. I don't necessarily have a character uh, in this cast that stands out uh, more than the rest or a personal favorite to me. I like them all. They served their purpose. They did their job, uh, pun intended. Um, but Sandra Bullock, she was the main character in this movie. Uh, one thing that I just really liked her in this film is early on in the film it showed just uh you know without any well no there was dialogue but you really just kind of got a sense of her character and how she just really doesn't give a crap and just gonna kind of do what she wants to do to get over um i can you can respect it but you can also despise it that's just depending on you no judgment uh, but it did do a great job of just t telling you or showing you how talented she is of a, of a criminal and how she just would finesse scene after scene after scene to where it was comical where you left like man she is a good ass thief you know what i'm saying she is a good ass con artist you know and so uh this is kind of weird to say that you know i'm praising con artists and thieves and things like that but you know hey um it, it is what it is but you know i said nobody can stand out but i guess sandra bullock uh the main character in this movie um, she did stand out. Now, a gripe that I did have kind of as I was watching the movie is, um, you know, when they're coming together with their plan and their group, one thing that I really did like about Ocean's Eleven is it really just didn't seem random. It seemed like, you know, the group of guys that work together, they used to work together all the time. 
with a number of jobs. And, you know, once the job is over, you know, they um, go about their separate ways, but they know that they're not out of the game. It's kind of like they're waiting on that next phone call, that next email, that text um, to do the next job. That wasn't the way it felt here in Ocean's Eleven. It did feel a little bit random. And there were just really no, not a tight knit relationship between the characters. Not that it was so much in the past three films, but I did feel that more in those films that I did this one. Um, and you know, the really the Ocean's trilogy, the original, there, I mean, they're all separate films, but with them warranting a sequel did feel organic because you have the first one, which kind of was revenge. And then the second one was retaliation. And then the third one was, you know, kind of like a keep your friends close, but your enemies closer type of vibe because they teamed up with Terry Benedict, you know, who they was robbing in the first one. So it was organic. This one right here, um, you know, is a spinoff. So that's just like one of the, another reason why it just did not have that, that camaraderie between the group that kind of made me love the first film so much. Um, but there was also some things in this movie. I was just like, okay, are they going to copy off the original? And there were an uh, element or two where they did. And I kind of like rolled my eyes like, oh man, I mean, this isn't anything fresh or they're not really adding anything new. Like the original trilogy, all those films is very, very different to me, at least in my opinion. Uh, but there were some points in this movie to where they did kind of like bit by beat, like literally verbatim copy a same plot device in, the, in part one. And I didn't like that. It, it, it kind of brought the film down for me, you know, um, at the moment. Um, other than that, there are a number of callbacks to the original uh, trilogy again. Um, the planning in this movie was very fun. I do like how they was uh, trying, you know, just it, it's just kind of fun to see how they're planning out this super duper plan of to, you know, steal these diamonds or these jewels and uh, things like that. But when I crapped on it, this film copying off the other one a little bit, um, there were a, a number of redeeming qualities that came up in the middle of this film, the second act, and also towards the end where they did reveal some things and you really thought, oh, I guess that's the movie. But no, it, it, the plot gets thicker and thicker and thicker and they reveal more and more and more and this behind the scene and that right there. And so while they did kind of copy off the past film, there was also... Look, if they gave you one element to copy it off Ocean's Eleven, they gave you two or three more elements that Ocean's Eleven did, but they did better or something completely different that those films didn't do at all. So it kind of erased my complaint that I had before that. Um, but when the film ended, I was surprised and I was like, OK, this is a worthy sequel or a worthy spinoff from the other one. The only other thing that I really just did not care for was what they did with um with George Clooney's character in this movie. Um, I wanted a little bit more. Um, I'm not going to tell you or give you any details of how it relates, but I was like, oh man, I wish they could have written that in just a little bit more, but that's just only a normal gripe. If I had to rate Ocean's 8 out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it an 8 out of 10. Yes, an 8 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion for Ocean's 8. I mean, have you seen it? Or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. But if you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also go to my website, check me out there, and look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of your screen, and I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff there in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of Ocean's 8. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.